We all do it, don't we? We go online and we look at cars, right? And you look at cars, different types of cars, and some some cars you look at and you think, I wonder what that's like. Now, where my channel's pretty good is I tend to buy as many random cars as I possibly can because I'm just like you lot. I'm curious. I want to know what things are like to drive, how demanded they are on the open market, and how good they are to, I suppose, daily drive as well. So, uh, behind me here, I've just bought this uh, Maserati Ghibli, right? This is not just a, a usual Ghibli because it wouldn't be, would it, on this channel? It is probably the cheapest Ghibli available on the market currently and it's a 3 litre v6 twin turbo diesel engine all right so this is actually maserati's first ever uh diesel production car which is quite interesting and today we're gonna do the usual thing man we're gonna go for a little wander around it talk to you about why i love this car what's got what it's got going for it maybe talk about what it's got going against it and then we're gonna go for a little drive on it later on in the video and do draggy times all right let's get on with it That's all right, mate. I'll wait for you to go first, yeah? There we go. He's going now. See you later, mate. See you later, mate. See you later, mate. Uh, postman's decided to pop in as well. He's actually proper sound postman. He's, he's a very, very friendly postman. See you later, mate. Out, See ya, mate. Here we go then, a 2014 Maserati Ghibli diesel, all right? They actually offered them, they offered them in a few engine variants, but the main two were a 3 litre V6 twin turbocharged diesel engine and a 3 litre V6 twin turbocharged petrol engine, all right? The petrol engine produced 404 brake horsepower and about 404 pounds feet of torque, uh, and the diesel engine produced 275 brake horsepower and about 440 pounds feet of torque, so a bit more torque out of the diesel. And you know what, a diesel, I suppose, it's hard to say like people ask me nowadays uh how do i buy a petrol or a diesel personally i would buy a diesel right now but as things are going i don't know man diesels are cheaper to run on a daily basis and although diesel is a little bit more expensive to, to buy uh, you do get more mpg out of a diesel but it's all personal preference but i do think this particular car is a great value for money car and the fact it's got a diesel it sort of serves uh, a daily purpose as well now i actually had one of these cars myself a few years ago for those that have been on around for a, a many many years might remember i had like a purpley colored maserati ghibli diesel and i narrowed it down to that particular car because i thought it's just great value for money at the time i didn't have a crazy amount of money to play with and i thought what can i get for my budget and i really really liked it now they don't have like german build quality like at the minute i'm driving this audi a6 which i am going to do a video on uh obviously that's german it's a similar type of car to be fair although that's a two litre diesel so it's not as exciting as what this is uh but yeah it's um the build quality of a german car is definitely a league above a maserati right maserati is obviously an italian brand italian make beautiful cars like credit to a Italians they do make some lovely cars uh, but there is sort of like a an American hint on this car. Now they, the, the company that, that own Maserati also own some American car brands uh, along with plenty of Italian brands as well. So there's still that Italian hint, but there is also an American hint. And I'll talk about that as, as we go around the car shortly. Now visually, I think it's quite an attractive car, man. The front end's pretty good. Like, I, I don't know, maybe a bit like an Alfa Romeo. Some people hate the look of them. Some people absolutely love the look of them. It is very different looking, but that is what Italians are all about. So I love the front, front end of it. The little bit of Maserati text in the headlight there, that looks really nice as well these wheels uh, i think they're a great set of wheels diamond cut face i thought they, they've got to be 20s isn't they they've got to be 20s let's have a little look what size are these wheels 245 40 20s on the front and then on the rear very chunky tires i think the tires look nice and meaty makes the ride super comfortable uh 285 35 20s on the rear so they're a staggered fitment a uh, bit chunkier on the rear which is really nice at the back like this car's got some serious road presence i think it weighs about 1800 kilos so it ain't a, a lightweight car by any means but at the back it looks really bold really chunky even the, the rear quarters there they've got some presence to them uh little things like going back to the american i suppose italian as well it feels a bit like if i open that boot yeah that boot is like really lightweight got my bag in there you know camera bag decent sized boot as well by the way probably quite similar to the boot in the audi a6 what car would you rather have by the way what car do you think is more expensive i think that's a better question is the audi a6 more expensive than this or is the maserati more expensive than the audi get that in your mind feel free to comment below uh but yeah boot's pretty good but the boot lid is really lightweight man like almost 
almost off-putting and I think um, I remember that with my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio I just love German build quality I love they just feel heavy a bit weighty and that to me just feels it's not even a negative how can I criticize that it's cool but it just I don't know it's lightweight but anyway uh four exhausts at the rear which is cool for anything with a diesel engine and then on the inside let's open that rear door first frameless windows which is really nice now if we go back to the italian hint that i mentioned earlier it does look and feel very italian in it like it's a nice place to be now uh this car's done ninety thousand miles so get that in your mind as well to see how well this is worn i would say that's worn unbelievably well even look at them headrests look at that lovely man look at that look, that is proper nice smells very italian here smells like you can smell all that leather let's quickly look under the bonnet why not there's nothing really much to talk about but yeah frameless windows is quite a cool thing on any car so i like it that they've done that uh da -da 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 -da. under the bonnet not too much to report could do with a good old van at this car it has just arrived uh we've given it a quick scrub for the video though v6 twin turbocharged i've said all that already producing 275 brake horsepower uh, it's about a, a second slower to 60 than the petrol engine version so again something's worth considering we are going to see how quickly it does 20 to 70 mile an hour shortly so um I, I, I am actually curious because i've done a video recently on a maserati quadriporte and i am curious to see if this is quicker than that i think i've done it in in low sixes from memory um, I will put the numbers up on the screen, but I wonder if this is quicker or slower than that from 20 to 70 mile an hour. That's a V8 petrol. I don't know. I don't know. We'll talk about that shortly. Should we jump in the driver's seat? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's all looking good in here. It is a ZF automatic gearbox, which from memory when I had my car a few years back, I actually really like that gearbox. So it'd be cool to revisit it today and see what I feel about how this thing drives today. I've not yet driven this car since it came in. Oh, by the way, see that looks pretty good. The difference in colour there. Is that leather though? Mm, don't think it's leather, but it don't look horrendous. But you can see straight away when I say about American build quality, I'm not ripping the Americans, you know, I'm not, I'm not here criticizing, but it does feel like that steering wheel feels like it's come out of maybe a Chrysler, I don't know. It just doesn't feel very Italian to me, that steering wheel. And I think that's a big feature in a car. Like if you're building a car, put effort into your steering wheel because I feel like a steering wheel is a real big part of the drive of a car. Like, I, I can't stress that enough. I put a lot of energy into my steering wheels in my cars. I always want to have a nice steering wheel. And to me, that steering wheel there, it's okay. It just passes the okay test. So uh, behind the steering wheel, we've got flappy paddles, which is cool. They're very big as well, which I like. They're mounted to the steering column, not the steering wheel, which is also quite good. Uh, wood center console in the center. A big old center armrest there with like a, basically a glove box underneath it sunroof alcantara headlining that's very italian i like that they made that effort to do that that's really good heated seats all i lights are on not off which is how i like it we'll leave that as that uh yeah ninety thousand miles i think what we need to do now guys throw the camera up in the window quickly pull up hpi and then we'll go for a drive in it all right Do you know what? I love a car with frameless windows. I, I know I've pointed that out a couple of times already in this video, but I think that's quite a nice feature, you know, when you open the window, uh, open the door, put the window down, which I can't do because you can just, do you know what? I'll shut that because the music, music's probably doing your head in. But yeah, I, I just like that. I think that's quite nice. You'd expect that on a coupe car, not on a saloon. So that's really good that they've done that. And I do want to keep reminding you that this sort of Italian American mix is actually a positive thing, you know, and you've got to consider the values of these cars, which I will talk about shortly. And it will make you think, do you know what? For the money, that is a bloody good car. And sometimes I wonder like Calvin as a person, like I do all these videos on YouTube, am I a car reviewer or am I a car trader? Like what the bloody hell am I? I'm just, I think I'm just a guy that loves cars. I love picking cars to pieces. I like analyzing cars and these are like, I suppose Calvin's car reviews rather than, well, I've, I've been there, man. I've been there in a position where I've got, want to buy a car. I've got a certain amount of money. What car am I look at, looking at? I'm obsessively looking on Auto Trader and eBay and everything, trying to work out what's the perfect car for me for my budget. And I've been at that point in time and I've ended up buying myself a Maserati Ghibli. Now, did I love it? I actually did, yeah, you know, I did love it. I really, really liked it but there were things that niggled me. But when you look at the Italian factor, like, the, like I said about the headrest, the little Maserati ba badge on the rear quarter there, there's loads of things that this car has got going for it, man. It's a nice thing to drive as well, which we will talk about shortly. And it's just loads of little, I don't know, little sim, even the little Maserati badges on the foot pedals are a bit dirty, but the little Maserati badges on the foot pedal there, the Ghibli badge on the dash, there is a lot. This car's got a lot going for it. So, um, and I, and I want to stress that as much as I possibly can because 
When we talk about the value shortly, you're gonna be like, do you know what? I can see why he likes that car. So let's just start the engine, talk about the sounds as well quickly. Is that like no fuel? It, range low, range is low, very, very low. Like, I think that's not even, I don't, I, it isn't even empty, it's like below empty. I don't know, first things first. Uh, Press accept on the screen there. It's a touch screen uh, infotainment system, by the way, which is pretty cool. Uh, put the aircon on, that is my priority in a minute because it's super warm today. What's the temperature? Average of 24 miles per gallon, apparently. So it's pretty good. It's not amazing, but that is pretty good. Uh, turn that down so we don't annoy you lot too much. Uh, but the sound, let's quickly talk about that. So you have got like an active sound box somewhere in this car. So when you give it a little rev, it sounds quite beastly. Sounds to me as good as the V8 SQ7, all right? That's also a diesel engine, uh, but that's a V8, this is a V6. I personally think that it sounds quite good, yeah? Obviously, it's unnatural, it's it's, a, it's an artificial sound, but it does sound all right, okay? So let me quickly pull up the HPI, let's talk about that. SO14 KFA, it's had a plate, tra plate transfer, which isn't the end of the world. Got a customer trying to pull the car. There's loads of room, you've got absolutely loads of room. Just chill. There you go, loads of room. Don't worry, you probably think, I don't want to damage that muzzle right. There must be like 100 grand or something. It's not 100 grand, mate. It's, um, that's a bit, yeah, we'll get to that bit it's shortly. So 9PP, this used to have a private plate, 9PP. That plate must have been a fortune, man, but it don't have that plate on it anymore. It's back to its original 14 plate. Five registers are clear, it's not stolen. Not got no finance, security watch, insurance write-off, or none of that, it's all clear. Uh, Maserati Ghibli V6 diesel auto, four-door saloon, eight-speed auto diesel, one former keeper from new, all right? So the, the fella or the person with the, the PP number plate has had it from new. That person, clearly a person with, with a lot of spondulies, yeah? They, you know, they chose to buy a Maserati and own it for all them years, so that's pretty cool. Uh, H5 spec check, we don't currently have that, which is annoying, uh, but spec-wise, what can I tell you? Has it got a reverse camera? Please, Maserati, have a reverse camera. Oh, you tilted backwards. I was, I was about to say, I was give it, about to give it a compliment, so yeah, it's got a reverse camera, it's got some roof, you know. No reverse camera, but it does have parking sensors. So no idea what the spec is, but I'm sure it offers everything. It's a bloody Maserati. No mileage discrepancy. It's really important to check that when you're buying a car because you don't want to buy a car and it tells you it's done 90,000 miles, when in fact it's done 140,000 miles. So do do your mileage checks as well. Uh, Cat Black Book Live, that's the valuation system that we use. Um, generally, car traders use the same. Most car traders across the country use Cat. It's, it's a very good system, uh, but currently, Values are all over the bloody place. Uh, in clean condition in the trade, this car books at 11,900 pounds. And then the retail value, that's based on it having 80,000 miles. It's obviously done 90, uh, but the retail value is 14,895, all right? So can I adjust that to show 90? No, I can't, uh, but with 100,000 miles, it's a little bit less than that, all right? I actually paid 12,000 pounds for this car and we've got it advertised currently for, there we go, the cheapest car on the net is a cat s1 there the one above that is 113,000 miles with some funny wrap on it plates are covered up as well a lot of people do that in adverts i suppose um, prevention i suppose but i don't do that uh 15,099 pound there it is there's the maserati what a cool car for the money so at this point you're probably thinking wow 15 grand for a Maserati, what a wicked car, man. And I agree with you if you are thinking that. Some people might be looking and thinking, I would never buy a Maserati, they're rubbish, but they're actually not that bad. And I think what we need to do now, before we do that, is just double check that I've covered everything, have I? Yes, no, yes, no, MOT, uh, till the 7th of the 7th, 2023, which is brilliant. We've just had the wheels refurbed by RRT UK. I actually bought it from another car trader, by the way. I didn't buy this direct off the, the private seller. It come from another car trader that we deal with, which is also brilliant. Uh, but yeah, that's it. We Let's get hit the roads, yeah, because I've talked enough. Let's, let's get out and show you what it drives like. Do you know what, before we do anything, I am gonna drive like a granny to the petrol station and get some diesel because it is like, I'll get a photo to show you. Yeah. 
That's it, guys. We have got fuel. Whee! That's a rare thing on this channel. Uh, if you are new, yeah, a lot of my cars seem to have no bloody fuel in them. Uh, but yeah, I just noticed that uh, there's not a spec option. I don't even know if it is a spec, spec option. Maybe they've all got it. But keyless entry. So the car, the key is currently in my pocket. I just walk up to the car. I put my hand in the handle. It unlocks. You know, it does it all for me. I get in. The engine starts. Stop button is on the dash there. Press that and. Voila, the engine starts, which is wonderful. And something else, something that we have not yet done is a hashtag key check. There it is. There's a wonderful key for your Maserai Ghibli. I've got a pair of these as well. That is a cool key. Very heavy though, like it would probably pass as a weapon. So if you got into a fight, you could use that as a weapon. Yeah, that would literally knock people out, all right? So it comes with fully equipped with a weapon as well. Uh, the gear stick, like the gear selector is really odd functionality. There you go, you sort of tilt it back. Oh, there's people behind me probably wondering, what the hell is this dickhead in his Maserati doing? But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Touch screen, let's put that back on so we're on the main screen on the infotainment. Have I talked enough? Yeah, I think I have. I've got fuel. Let's get a seatbelt on and hit the road. Porsche 911 Turbo S in my rear view mirror. That's a proper sports car, that is. That, you know, this feels like a sports car. I'm looking at the reflection of the headlights in the shop window there. They, they look proper nice, the headlights in this car. Sort of like got a strip of LEDs as well, yeah, very aggressive. Got like a Triumph there, got a Triumph over there, got a mixture of cars everywhere in the garage today. Let me just get a photo of the, all the wonderful cars in the garage, one second. Not on my phone while I was driving, by the way. So, sports button on, window is open, cameras are on, we have fuel. Listen, let's have a little listen, yeah? Listen. It's got like that echoing V8 sound. You know, if you're driving through to loads of big buildings, say you visualize yourself in London, there's an urban Land Rover in front of me. Shout out to Urban Automotive. They do a very, very good job what they do. I just sold an Urban Evoke, by the way. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the sound, the, the, that echoing sound, listen. Does it sound better or worse with the windows up? Let's have a... I think better with the windows down, but you'd think it'd be the other way round because of the uh, like the artificial sounds that it's making, probably through the speakers. But with the window down, you get a noise from the outside, which you would get normally with any car. But you kind of wouldn't expect to get out of this. So yeah, pretty good. The gearbox does have a manual mode as well. I've just got to work out how to bloody select it. Um, oh, you press the big M button for manual. Then you can go over to your paddles on the steering wheel. Just trying to work out where it's telling me what gear I'm in. Oh, there you go, big M2 in the center of the dash there. Uh, look at that. The gearbox is really good. Like. I wouldn't normally use my flappy paddles on a diesel automatic like daily commuter car. You just don't feel that urge. But with this car, you actually do. Downshift to second. It strangely does drive like a diesel sports car. By the way, that's like, um, I, I can't really tell you what that, that bleeping noise is on the dash, but it's, it's in relation to the speed of the road. Okay, we'll try and turn that off. But yeah, the paddles are brilliant. The gearbox is, really good it drives like a bloody sports car you would not get in this and feel like look at that it's rear wheel drive by the way front engine rear wheel drive it's an old peugeot coupe i ain't seen one of them for ages man at least i remember wanting one of them as well i had a Vauxhall Calibra. i remember thinking i want a peugeot coupe they've done them as a three litre v6 as well i think yeah probably the same three litre v6 as in the renault clio um v6 shut up please shut up you're gonna get me in trouble a few moments later. Mate, I've got no idea how to turn that speed limit thing off. I've spent so much time doing it as well. A few moments later. Here we go then. Three, two, one. 6.23 seconds to beat. I'll be honest, I don't think it's going to do it because that's a V8 petrol engine. They seem to perform better than diesel engines generally. But in about three seconds, we're going to find out. Two, one, no. Run number one, we've done 7.16 seconds, so we did not come anywhere near about second behind uh, the Quadraport A. 
which is kind of no surprise, but it was worth comparing it to. I'll do two more runs and I'll come back to you shortly to see if we can come anywhere near, even into the sixes would be good. 7.16 to beat. I'll let you know if I beat it shortly, all right? Downshift for the bend. This is wicked, this car, man. So I have just finished doing the draggy times. Look at this. The little display on the dash, by the way, that's all really good. It does everything you want it to. It's shown current MPG, 99 MPG currently with my foot off the throttle, uh, but an average of 23.2 MPG uh, based on the way that I've been driving it. I've got 38 miles left in the range because I've just obviously just stuck a fiver in it. Draggy time, that's what we want to talk about. So this car just done 20 to 70 mile an hour. It did get in the sixes. It's done it in 6.85 seconds, which is quite interesting because we, um, you know, I aim to be in the sixes. I was expecting low sixes. It does feel quicker than that, I'll be honest with you, but I say it a lot, diesels give you that sort of false perception of speed. Uh, to give you an idea what that compares to, if you look at the Dragon leaderboard, which I'll put on the screen now, um, sits right in the middle of a Mark V Golf GTI in stock form, 200 brake horsepower, and an FN2 Civic Type R, which is also 200 brake horsepower. So, not massively quick, but it's still quite cool that it sits up against cars like that. There's sports hatches, you know, they're designed to be out on the road racing their mates and all that sort of car, that, that sort of stuff, them, them types of cars. So that is pretty good. It's it's just a good all rounder, I think, this car. And I think the fact that Maserati is that big, sort of bold, prestigious brand, like I mentioned earlier, and you know, things like it's, it's part of, you know, people probably say that it's part of like the Ferrari group or the group that own Ferrari also have something to do with Maserati. I don't know, but it's, a, it's got a lot of qualities got a lot going for it it's got a little bit going against it but in fairness it's great value for money so it's bloody brilliant Cal pick up your enthusiasm mate it's bloody brilliant 15 grand look what you're getting 15 grand I'm guessing by the time this video goes lot stay there transit because I've just had the wheels refer thank you sir Thank you, Mr. Transit. Look at that double transits there. Um, yeah, by the time this video goes goes live, I'm pretty sure that this car will be sold, but uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you are about to buy one of these cars, I hope that this video has shined some light on what you're about to do, all right? Can I just recommend something before you go? This video here, go and check it out. Honestly, you won't regret it.